You might notice the extensive wood piles behind me here. I'm at the home of Marty and Dick Kais in Hopkinton, and the wood pile is part of their home and their story of how they live in Hopkinton, and they also provide a living community at Labrie School and setting out in Southboro, and they uh, support over seven, I believe it's eight, wood stoves with all of this great wood. So I'm looking forward to hearing more. Hello, Marty and Dick. Thank you so much for having me in your home this morning in late November. And the sun is coming through your beautiful windows. I see nature outside and books around me and art reminding us of the beauty of nature all around you here. So I anticipate there is a lot of interesting information to learn about you and your lives. I wonder if we could get started and talk a little bit about what brought you here to the town of Hopkinton and what do you uh, most appreciate about living here? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we lived in Southboro, uh, had our housing with our work in Southboro mm -hmm. since the late 1970s, mm -hmm. um, working with an organization called La Brie Fellowship. Uh, it became clear in 2010 that we needed to move off campus, so to speak, and mm -hmm. make space for a younger family. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started looking at houses. We, we looked in, I don't know, maybe 15 or, or more adjacent, Southboro and adjacent towns. Wow. And actually, this is the first the house, we, the first day we looked at houses, we saw this house, but we'd never had to buy a house before. We've always, always had our housing with our work. Mm. And so uh, we didn't know how to compare it. And we looked around, couldn't afford anything we could stand to live in, in Southboro, but Hopkinton has more of a range. Mm -hmm. And um, I loved Hopkinton already. I was already, I was coming to Curves in Hopkinton mm -hmm. when it was here, mm -hmm. and I was also using Hopkinton Drugstore for compounds. And so I was already driving to mm -hmm. Hopkinton and mm -hmm. liked the feel of the town, liked mm -hmm. the fact that there were um, state parks um, and so on. And so we contacted the realtor, realtor after having seen quite a few houses. Could we go back and look at that house on Penny Meadow Lane? Mm. And um, we loved it. It was barely, just barely in our price range. And mm. we actually have felt like it was almost prepared for us. There was so much. I've not, we've not done anything to the house mm, except for wow. essentials like we, we needed a new roof and so on. But mm -hmm. the colors are all the same. We are committed to wood heat and we have a wood mm -hmm. stove. Yeah. Beautiful new kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, we love it. And we have mm -hmm. wonderful neighbors. Dick wanted woods and I wanted neighbors. Ah. And we got woods <laughs> and neighbors. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, yeah. who's calling your name then? Yeah, huh? we're, we're very <laughs> happy here. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Dick, do you have anything uh, to No, add? just I think yeah. the, we didn't really know that much about it. At least mm -hmm. I didn't. Yeah. And, and, uh, but the neighbors are a huge draw. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. They've been really great mm -hmm. community here. Yeah, Little sub-community. So it's right. been very... Really nice. Uh -huh. We're also thrilled <coughs> to have water fresh around the corner. Yes. Um, we when we moved mm -hmm. here, it hadn't quite. We, we were watching it being built and thinking, which is hydroponic. Yeah. Uh, mm. Farm for hydroponic farm. Yeah, farm to table. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Cafe, mm -hmm. greenhouse, um, wonderful fair trade gifts. Mm -hmm. It's it's um, and especially with Colella's closed down. Yes, I'm yeah. in there for staples like milk uh -huh. and eggs, you know, every week. Yeah. So it sounds like farm, <laughs> nature, uh, our connection and uh, interconnection mm -hmm. uh, to the outdoors mm -hmm. is important for both of you as a couple since mm -hmm. moving here, since perhaps yes. you were together. Where do you both come from? Your, your background, your roots uh, that mm -hmm. brought you together and in pursuit of being close to nature in different ways. I started in Pepperell, Massachusetts, ah, up, okay. up uh, beyond Groton, yeah. near the New Hampshire border, mm -hmm. and lots of woods. Mm -hmm. yes. And so I got used to that. That was yeah. the norm for me. Mm -hmm. And so I've always, spent a lot of time as a yes, child. Yes, a lot. Your dad. My father was very much into the environment and conservation and so mm -hmm. forth, and hunting and skiing and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was the norm for me. And, yeah. and coming to city to be educated, which happened to me, I felt very hemmed mm -hmm. in. Where so, were you educated? Well, I went to uh, in Cambridge, yeah. and mm -hmm. and, uh, and then 
uh, went to graduate school in Philadelphia. And, okay. And mm -hmm. So so uh, that's very different than Pepperell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So so we we escaped to Vermont too sometimes. Ah. So so that's uh -huh. there's a family place there that we've, mm -hmm. that we've mm. escaped to. So. That's been my orientation, but mm -hmm. I, I agree with Marty that it's great to have neighbors that are right there and you yes, can get to yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we also, in, there's quite a lot of work on this property. Mm -hmm. um, we put in a vegetable garden oh, when we came, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but there, a previous owner, <clears throat> not the most recent one, but an earlier owner was a gardener. So there was a lot, there were a lot of beautiful plantings mm -hmm. on this property. And I remember when we first moved here, I called Western Nursery and said, can we, can we hire someone just for <clears throat> an hour or an hour and a half to walk around our property and tell us what we have? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want an, you to do the landscaping. It's already been done. And that was extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so we keep busy on the property. Dick does a lot of work with the chainsaw, for a, mm -hmm. both for work, <laughs> for the wood-burning stoves there and for here. But, you know, he's 75, I'm 70, and yeah. it's good to keep active mm -hmm. outside, mm -hmm. to keep mm -hmm. physically working. So as long as we can, we, we want to be able to do that, and it's productive work mm -hmm. on the property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, so uh, cutting wood for over seven wood stoves, is that what I heard? <laughs> well, that's eight, in our, eight, in our, eight, in our eight, job. Three. We just have one wood stove, stove <laughs> yeah. here, uh -huh. but uh, yeah. where we work is a very large old mansion <clears> and another house attached and there's, I think, eight wood stoves there. Wow. And your cabin. So, and I have a little cabin. <laughs> a little cabin and there as well? That's right. Okay. Uh -huh. That's right. And uh, that's when we moved here. We, I needed a place to hang out there okay. and without Almost. taking up bedrooms. Uh -huh. And so yeah. I have a little cabin. Now, is, your work, uh, where you chop all the wood for yeah. over there <laughs> to heat it, uh, is uh, very unique and interesting uh, in talking with you earlier. Mm. Uh, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit about Labrie, um, how you came to this work mm -hmm. as a couple, um, what inspired you to take this on, what does it involve? Um, what do you have that to say? A, yeah. It's a like lot. a book to tell yeah. about to, this, right? So first of all, Labrie is the French word L apostrophe A-B-R-I. It's just the French word for shelter. Ah, it started okay. in French-speaking Switzerland mm -hmm. uh, in the 1950s. I stumbled into that branch there mm -hmm. myself just after I finished college in the mid-60s, mm -hmm. trying to keep from getting drafted because I was very mm -hmm. unsure about Vietnam. And, and uh, for me, that was my introduction really to the Christian faith in a, in a full and thoughtful way. Oh. And so um, from that time on, I had contact with, the, with that group of people. Mm -hmm. And it's, then the Swiss branch was the only one. It's expanded. We were... So that time period again was was mid sixties. Mid sixties, yeah. okay. And and uh, we, uh, when I finished graduate school, went. I'd been married along in the middle of graduate school, yeah. and we went to. After I graduated, we went to England for ten years, mm -hmm. uh, London, and then in the, in the country to work in with Hampshire, the same organization. Both as a pastor of a church in London and also working with this organization, and the organization itself is a strange combination of uh, uh, people, it's a, we call it a residential study community. People come to us mm. and they stay temporarily for anything like a day or two to up two or three months uh, who want to investigate the Christian faith if they know it's true or not or if they maybe have grown up in church but have been burned mm -hmm. uh, and are cynical about it. They want to just investigate it to see if it's true or not or it makes any difference if God is there. Uh, or they just want to learn. Mm -hmm. And so there's a huge range of things that bring people to us, mm -hmm. but they study half the day with a study program that we create, sort of tailor-made for them, mm -hmm. according to what they're what they brought. So you are educators as well as program mm -hmm. coordinators. Very much, yeah. and and yeah. and sort of counseling uh, all as we mm -hmm. go along. Although mm -hmm. we don't advertise ourselves as sort of uh, as counselors, but we one does a lot of one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with people with yeah. things that that, are, that concern them. And so half the day they would study in, in this tailor-made curriculum. The other half, we would put them to work in the community, which mm -hmm. might mean chopping wood, uh, <laughs> shoveling wood. snow, cutting grass, scraping paint. Helping uh, cook. Helping, mm -hmm. doing laundry. And, and why and would so you on. do that? Excuse me? Why do you do that? Well, because we, <clears throat> we, we, we need it, mm -hmm. first of yeah, all, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because we run on a shoestring and we can't employ people to do all <laughs> that. Uh, and also, 
it's good to do. It's mm -hmm. good to do it together with other mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the life of the community. Mm -hmm. And the other part is that we spend a lot of time in discussion. We have long mm -hmm. meals uh -huh. and we have discussions over meals and we welcome discussing anything that uh, comes to anybody's head with any seriousness that yeah. they want to talk about. And so, so sometimes things come up at the table in an educational format, but it could also happen outside chopping wood or... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and anything. Yeah. Uh, or washing dishes. There's mm -hmm. lots of dishes to wash. Mm -hmm. It can lots come up. <laughs> some of the best conversations are dealing deal with wa are washing dishes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and uh, it could be to do with philosophy, with politics, with sexuality, with relationships, with yeah. uh -huh. literature, with anything that's the on arts. people's minds. Yeah. And so it's it's very uh, broad. But people can come. People come or you have to be at least 18, but okay. otherwise people can come who are up into their 80s. Huh. Yeah. Uh, so how is uh, Libri funded? Do you want to do that one, Marty? Sure. <laughs> Let me just back up. And, yeah. Just <laughs> in sure. terms yeah. of my own, um, neither of us were raised in, in really Christian hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. I was in sort of a nominal Christian family. Dick wasn't, it, there was not even the nominal part. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was in high school and I was at a, a girls boarding school, Northfield School for Girls. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now Nor it's Northfield Van Herman now about in Western Mass, in my senior year, I, I experienced a real crisis of meaning, I guess, mm -hmm. and wondering, lots of pressure to get into college, get into the best college you can. Mm -hmm. And I started asking big meaning questions with mm. sort of capital meaning, you know, what is life all about? Why mm -hmm. am I on this planet? Um, and I, it just so happens that there was a history teacher at the school who had stumbled into the Swiss branch of Labrie, ah. and uh -huh. from, a very, from an agnostic Catholic background, and she had come to faith mm -hmm. there, very thoughtful, bright person, and she was extremely helpful to me hmm. as a senior in high school, wow. um, challenging me to <clears throat> consider the claims of Jesus and be open to listen to them, to hear them. And, and, and so I came to faith, actually at about the same time Dick did, but we didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. Although, interestingly, Dick was lifting weights at Harvard with a, with a guy um, who, who was a believer and a very thoughtful Christian. He was the brother of the history teacher who was talking oh to me. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Wow. Yeah, it was, very, it was an uh -huh. amazing so, sort of story when we mm -hmm. found that out. So we met each other um, about a year or so after both of us had come to faith. Mm -hmm. And and initially encouraged by a brother and sister team without knowing, <laughs> without knowing it. Uh -huh. So um, we were both very grateful to how, to Libri to the teaching of the Schaefers and others in helping us think about life. For me, thinking about my studies because I was at at Wellesley College studying biblical history and had lots of questions. Um, and so we had this in common. And um, I won't spend the whole time telling how we decided to work to work with Libri. But we had this sort of common background when we met. Mm, um, mm -hmm. Okay, now you would, <laughs> the question you actually asked <clears throat> was about the funding, the yes. financing uh -huh. of the But that's interesting background information. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, um, uh. yeah. From the beginning, the the Schaefer family who started the work, mm. um, they they believed that they had a um, a sort of a special calling. They did not believe this was true for everyone, mm -hmm. but to they wanted to. Um, somehow be a demonstration of the reality of God into the, at the time, 20th century, hmm. now into the 21st century, through, uh, among other things, they cut themselves off from financial support and decided to um, pray for both for the people to come, wow. um, mm -hmm. for the wherewithal to feed and care for the people who came, so for the finances, and also for a pl how the work should unfold. Mm -hmm. So they... Um, they were in Europe at a time after, shortly after World War II, where they, they had been working in churches where there was a huge amount of cynicism and discouragement as a result of the war and um, people growing up very cynical about God, about church, about everything, mm -hmm. <laughs> about life. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they just found that once they made this, um, once they committed themselves to prayer, um, their house just started filling up people started showing up. Hmm. And initially, a lot of friends of their children who were at university, um, in school and then in university, and, and then other people, uh, amazing stories. Um, during the 70s, I guess, no, the 60s, um, 
a whole lot of Malay Malaysians showed up in this tiny village, Waymo sur Roland, in French-speaking Switzerland, independently of each other, who were searching. Hmm. And, and um, many of them came to, to faith. And they didn't know each other first, mm -hmm. but it was, it was an amazing sort of demonstration of, or, or confirmation oh. of their sense that, that God would bring people who okay. could be helped to this place. Through the act of prayer. Um, yeah. Yes. So prayer is, um, is actually, and we still have in all the branches, and there are now oh, eight or nine branches all mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. um, Monday we have is a day of prayer, and yes. we all spend time singing, praying. We, we do not require students mm -hmm. to come to the prayer meeting. Many of them don't consider themselves believers or have problems with prayer or have problems in a group prayer. Mm -hmm. And we, the last thing we want to do is pressure people to... Mm -hmm do something religious or spiritual that they are not comfortable with. Right. So mm -hmm. it's totally um, um, optional. optional, right? Mm -hmm. But it's important. But the mm -hmm. praying does mean we don't do any fundraising. Yeah. I see. So we don't uh -huh. send our brochures or don't have a mm -hmm. development department that yeah. goes fundraising. Wow. So, wow. so uh, um, I've turned over leadership of it to uh, the next generation now. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but uh, in my whole time leading it, I never went out to raise money. I would do, mm -hmm. just do the work mm -hmm. and we would pray. Mm -hmm. And somehow, wonder of wonders, we still exist. Which is such a privilege. Mm -hmm. we, we know many people in Christian works who have to spend a lot of their That's time right. fundraising. Yeah. And, yeah. and well, we do not disparage that. And the Schaefer's and none of us in Liberty have ever felt this is the way all people mm -hmm. should do it. Mm -hmm. um, the Apostle Paul raised money, went around. Um, twisting arms of the Gentile From Christians, the Bible, to, yeah, yeah, to um, to help feed the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem who mm -hmm. were in famine during mm -hmm. time of famine. There's, you know, there's absolutely every biblical legitimacy to to raising money. But mm -hmm. this has been Labrie's calling, and mm -hmm. we feel very thankful for it because mm -hmm. of just that we don't have to spend all that time. That's right. <laughs> this is over 50 years now. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that oh, this it has is. been in be existence 55. and yeah. growing in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. That's and right. Just continues to uh, right. sustain itself through yeah. uh, the work of prayer. Yeah. Uh, That's right. Is what you That's are right. both uh, offering, and yeah. uh, but this also in addition to this work that you have done. Uh, in the faith and the prayer and what you have coordinated and offered as programs um, <laughs> in many different ways at the Labrie School and community, but you also raised your children in, mm -hmm. in this yeah. environment, right? How yeah. did that go? How, how does that work? That, we were very grateful for um, um, strong encouragement from older uh, Labrie families saying, you must be sure you, you do not lose your children in, in the work. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who've shown up at Labrie over the years have been missionary kids and pastor's kids who've been neglected for their parents' work. Mm -hmm. And so um, we've, one of the things that in all the branches we have more that we don't have one couple or one family doing the work. We share it with other people so we have times off, we can put a sign on our door day off, uh, we don't serve all the meals, so we have family times, we, and we try very hard to protect our children, um, and uh, also in just um, the space, how, how we organize the space in the mm -hmm. Libri houses. But um, a huge blessing, which I did not anticipate, hadn't thought about, was many years ago we had a social historian lecture for us whose work was on the history of the family and how the family, family life and dynamics have changed since industrialization. Mm. And when she stayed with us in the Southboro house um, to lecture, and she stayed overnight a few nights, she said she marveled at our social structure. Mm. She said, mm -hmm. do you realize you have the advantages of pre-industrial life without the disadvantages? Mm. I said, what do you mean? Well, you get to, parents get to raise their children together from home with total flexibility mm -hmm. in terms of division of labor. Um, but you don't have the, di you know, we have penicillin and, and you have a Cuisinart to chop <laughs> as, up the vegetables. As, as, as she said, you, you have electricity and you believe in washing your hands. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh -huh. yeah. But um, that, and particularly in a lot of the work and the lecturing that I've done, which has been on um, family, women, feminism, mm -hmm. the Bible, and so on, is, mm -hmm. you know, one of the, one of the, uh, the crises, in, in a sense, 
still with us from industrialization was work leaving the home. And then the whole question that raised about um, work family division, who raises the kids, who earns the money, how do we do this division? This is still in the news all the time. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a, and it's been seen as a woman's problem, but I want to say no. It's, it's a parent's issue, but it's also a whole society issue because mm -hmm. of what's good for children mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that, that everybody needs to, <laughs> needs to work mm -hmm. in the broadest sense of that word, not, not necessarily paid, mm -hmm. but doing productive, um, productive things with their, right. with their and lives. And show so, that by example in, the, in no, this and, We're and able to do that. I also meant that I could spend as much time raising the children as she did, so, right, which is right, awesome. And, yeah. and just we yeah. adjust as needed, whenever yeah. needed. So I see how privilege. you've been uh, spiritual mentors as well as uh, community mentors mm -hmm. uh, in, in this environment and professors of sort. Mm -hmm. And Dick, what would you, uh, what do you focus on in your teaching over there as well as facilitating it's, teachers? Yeah, it's very varied uh, because people can come. We try and let the, our idea of what we teach is formed by the people who come and what we think they need and, mm -hmm. and uh, over the years. So there's planning uh, <clears throat> tailored yeah. to people and yeah. what their mm -hmm. needs are, yeah. as well as you use them as a resource, that's right? right. And Absolutely. have them give talks yeah. uh, from their areas yeah. of expertise. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. We do. That's right. So my my maybe my, my writing has been an interesting. I I, I compare it to chain smoking, <laughs> in that the theory of chain smoking is that you light each cigarette mm -hmm. with the butt end of the last cigarette. Yeah. Uh huh. And so the first thing I wrote was on personal identity, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. which is a huge issue to pe mm -hmm. for people who come, mm -hmm. and, and uh, how our identity really needs to relate to God, not just a, mm -hmm. an intra-psychological issue, mm -hmm. but it relates to the big questions as well. Mm -hmm. uh, when I finished that, I realized I touched on the issue of heroism mm -hmm. as being important in your mm -hmm. forming of your identity, but I realized I hadn't done justice to that, so that was the butt end, and uh, then that then uh, I, I, the next thing I wrote or lectured on was hero, heroism. In doing that, I touched on cynicism because that was uh, mm -hmm. a big enemy of heroism as being cynical about the possibility uh -huh. of her being heroic. So the next book I wrote was on cynicism. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, that will give you an, a, a, an yeah, idea of uh, the diversity of the uh -huh. track we, we take. Which is a but, wonderful learning model, yeah. you know, to mm -hmm. operate from what one thing le le rather yeah. than a trajectory of we got to learn this way and yeah. these kind of oh, information. Yeah. That's and, right. And, and the good thing is that when we lecture, it's recorded, so we yeah. don't need to repeat it as, mm -hmm. our, as a professor does who teaches the same course every year. Mm -hmm. So it's there, and we can go on and do new, new mm -hmm. topics uh -huh. because we, it's, it's recorded and it's available for people mm -hmm. to listen to in a huge bank wow. of, of uh, a re resource of, yes. of audio lectures. Well, I'm, I'm curious now. I understand we have five minutes left. I have so many questions. <laughs> I will have to look into Labrie mm -hmm. more. Uh, but my understanding also is you accommodate, you welcome people of all faiths, uh, all mm -hmm. backgrounds of mm -hmm. life there, and there is no expectation to convert to any particular... Well, we, we, we have anyone come who, who is seriously looking for what's true and willing to listen to us mm -hmm. because we are unashamedly Christians. Right, right. And so mm -hmm. we don't say all religions are the same mm -hmm. uh, because uh, those, that's very hard to say mm -hmm. uh, if you're honest about what... what they make very told. different claims <clears throat> about yeah. whether there's a God and, and what so, it's like. But, but we she. very much welcome anybody to come mm -hmm. as long as they're serious about taking the issue of truth seriously. Mm -hmm. And so it works best if we have diversity of beliefs mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. and, and, but in any case, people come with totally different agendas of what they want to get from us. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody whose marriage is in trouble, somebody else who's been burned by their church for some reason mm -hmm. or another, somebody mm -hmm. else who's very cynical about the political situations, mm -hmm. or, or whatever. <clears throat> it's, uh, so we need, each person needs a, a, a separate curriculum mm -hmm. for, that, for them. Mm -hmm. We could never have a single curriculum. Uh -huh. So yeah. we adjust as we go along. Yeah. And, and then you go, you, your church community is separate from this. You go to Framingham? Yes, uh, we actually became members of, Frame, of Greater Framingham Community Church, which is a black church. Mm -hmm. um, we are a minority white members of that church. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
actually after having been going there for quite a few years, the pastor and the deacons asked Dick to be one of the ministers. So uh, mm -hmm. he is the white boy up front. He does not blend in. <laughs> uh -huh. And when he preaches, he preaches in his own style, which is quite different mm -hmm. from our pastor. But um, we, we read... I read a book called More Than Equals, written by a black man and a white man on racial reconciliation mm -hmm. many years ago. And it challenged us to be proactive mm -hmm. in terms of what we could do toward racial reconciliation mm -hmm. and realizing that we we believed in it, but we didn't have any black friends mm -hmm. and there, or, or immediate neighbors. And so um, we started going to this church. We were welcomed and um, we've been there for over 20 years. Wow. Um, uh -huh. It was another reason for staying early on was our son is a musician, one of our sons, and kind of played black music already. And it was a place where his gifts were really appreciated. He mm. became one of the church musicians. And, um, uh, but we've learned a lot about worship and we've also made wonderful friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And also another reason is that, is that we like to take our students who want to yeah. go to church to come to church with mm -hmm. us. And a lot of our students come pretty cynical about the church yeah. and take them along to an African-American church and they can't be cynical in the same way. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot that breaks through to them mm -hmm. about what uh, Christian people do. Yeah, and, and applied learning in different sense yeah. rather yeah. than just the, the talk, right? This is not, yeah. you don't mistake it for a country club. So I see how you yeah. are teachers uh, in, in your <laughs> beings, uh, and I am intrigued to learn more. We have one minute left, so for, uh, beyond, you're looking toward retirement, leaving Libri. What is ahead for you? What is of hobby or uh, bucket list plans to go to mm. uh, in the last well, minute or so? Yeah, we are kind of just in a transition um, uh, out. Say a word about writing. Okay, well, I have, been, I have been encouraged by many people for quite a few years to try to publish some of the things I've lectured. Mm -hmm. I have a stack of lectures that tall. And I, um, I've actually started working on that project. And um, I'm, in, for the first time, encouraged because I actually have some ideas Terrific. about wow. how to organize uh -huh. it. I, I, thankfully, I don't have a deadline. Mm -hmm. And I have a friend who's done editing work, and he and his wife, are re going to are reading my lectures and helping so me write for that. you. Also, uh -huh. we, we'd love to get to Vermont more often. Uh -huh. yeah. We have when we lived in England, we made friends with people from all over the world. Mm. Some of our best friends live in Tasmania. Ah. And we <laughs> plan sometime in the next year to go and see them in Tasmania. Wow, wonderful. Yeah. And and Dick uh, I'm unsure of whether I'm going to do more writing. I've got a couple of projects. Yeah. He's written fuming, four books. I, uh -huh. I, four books, sorry. When you're not writing, you get to read other people's books, which uh -huh. is sometimes more interesting. <laughs> yes, that's uh, right. So, more fun. So, so, uh,